Yeah. You know, but doesn't even really exist once we once we do our art. True. You know, True. it's not for us; it's for them. At that Who point. even knows if we're here? We were never really here, folks. We're all vapor. I can't get over how fucking gorgeous this uh, Switzerland uh, skyline shit that Ben put on is. Oh my god, look at this! I know that is magnificent. They have it so much better than us. I know. I do love that God was like, okay, you guys get the most beautiful area, the most beautiful people, and all the other people hide their money. Here. Yeah. Like if if we where do we go to see this? Like you have to go to Yosemite, and then you get like killed by your boyfriend. <laughs> This is yeah, you where have people to, live. You have to go in America. You have to go to a place where everybody talks like the farmer from Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, they eat egg soup, mm-hmm. and they go, "I found an arrowhead over there." They playing the banjo and yell, telling you, telling you to squeal. Mm-hmm. You have to go to shallow grave, Wyoming, <laughs> to see something mm-hmm. this beautiful. And Wyoming's only beautiful because there's like 18 people living there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people, people there are like buffalo. They're just wandering through fields, yeah, just roaming in like groups of like 80. I didn't realize we've destroyed um, giant pieces of uh, of the land in the United States just by treating it improperly. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know like where we grew up in like Texas? Wait, you hear and stuff? what we did to people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben, Ben, being like, did you know there was people here before we put McDonald's in? <laughs> oh Lord! Apparently, we we blew them up to smithereens. Ben's like, it's horrible what this country did to trees. <laughs> Yeah, Ben thinks Ronald McDonald discovered America. Uh, yeah, I guess I am a yeah. big retard, huh? You thought the Omaha race riot was BLM? You're like, wait, they burned down another target? Like, no, we actually killed like 5,000 black people. What? what? The only way we learn history in this country is we have to wait for HBO to make like a superhero show about it. And portray it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The only way to learn history is to wait for Nolan to make a four-hour movie about it. <laughs> yeah. We're like, wait, was Thanos involved in the busing crisis? <laughs> oh, so so Oppenheimer and all those Jews—they made the Infinity Gauntlet for J- Japanese people. <laughs> they made the the H bomb. Does that stand for the Heckin bomb? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see anything about this on Reddit. So How come they can't get poor people Reddit gold? <laughs> Dude, the best meme in the world, by the way, is Donald Trump in Home Alone 2, and he's pointing like this to Kevin Callister, and mm-hmm. he says, uh, Reddit is down the hall and to the left. Mm-hmm. That's a great reply to someone on, on Twitter. He I says, love that. Reddit is down the hall? Uh, Reddit is down the hall and to the left. <laughs> oh, on Twitter. Uh, when okay. someone posts something something really cringy, oh, right. you just respond with that. That's great. Right. I like mm-hmm. that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I did see some... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right. You know, I'm going to save that to my epic memes folder. My heckin' epic memes folder mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. On my Chrome. But no, I did see something on Twitter that actually filled, it filled me with a lot of hope. Um, it was somebody being like, um, strange how there's no women talking in Oppenheimer till 20 minutes in, and then it's literally a sex scene. And then somebody like what some black person who's funnier than any comedian who's ever existed, <laughs> but you've never heard of them. Quote tweet and they're like, get this twenty seventeen ass tweet out of here and got like a hundred faves. Yeah. And to me that was like seeing like land for the first time after like the world floods. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's like sending a dove out and being like, Oh, okay, we're all racist and sexist again. Mm. Right. We don't care. Right. No, the Oppenheimer takes have been funny to watch. It's like, you know, the, it's it's what like watching people learn about the history of the world in real time on mm. Twitter. It's just hilarious. And they write a very like cocky tweet about it. Like like uh, like an like a know it all tweet, but they're a know nothing person. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an amazing it's an amazing thing to witness. Mm. You know, right. I see those people make the podcast runs now where they're like explaining very matter of, of, of factly like what is going on, but they don't even have the vocabulary to know what they're talking about. Yeah. But yeah. I guess retards just share it on TikTok anyway. I'm trying to think of an example of this. I've just seen women try to... I, people real people understand that they can do a thing where they're like, um, they're like, wait, uh, there's a faction of white people that hate black people, but I'm black. So what I could do is become the black guy that hates them more than white people do. Mm. And I see women do this where they're like, I'll be the woman who hates women more than men who hate women hate women. And then everyone posts the emoji where he's like like, like rubbing his chin like, damn, I should do, that's interesting. Damn, you that, just opened my mind up. That's deep as hell. That's deep as hell. TikTok's full of people going like pointing above to the words and mm-hmm. they're like, is this my ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> right. I've seen. I've literally seen TikToks where it's like a black teenager being like, "Yeah, y'all know about this shit," and it's a video of nine eleven happening. <laughs> Dude, I've literally yeah, seen that. I've literally seen that. <laughs> and it's Zoomers being like, "Yo, you capping though? Is that the Burj Khalifa Tom Cru- Cruise climb that though?" Like, God, we're all a bunch of m- m- complete morons. <laughs> oh man. I guess we would have done the same thing though, right? When we were kids, like just being like, "Whoa!" Like and just pointing, and it's John F. Kennedy's head exploding. <laughs> right. we're like, "Whoa!" But the Capitol, for real though. It's like the Rugrats movie or yeah. whatever we'd be talking about then. Mm-hmm. Not that sure. a, that a drive by. I went, when I was in Dallas looking at the. Uh, I mean, I don't think I've told this story. When I was in Dallas looking at the where the the X's are. Where where he got shot? Mm. There were these two like just like really they were like probably like seventeen year old black dudes there, and they were like they asked me they go yo this where the dude got his brains blown out? <laughs> I know like it was like some guy from their neighborhood. Yeah, like it was yeah. just a guy. They right. kind of knew. This where they got little like, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, John. The they think it's John mm. fucking Kennedy. <laughs> Yo, is this what they did the president like they did pop smoke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Notorious JFK. Oh, so this is where XXX Tentacion died. Uh, oh, so that's why the X is on the road right there. <laughs> Sirhan Sirhan's their favorite rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I remember going there like when I was 12 years old and uh, I went there with my grandma. And there was, I was like, I was the most 12 year old guy. I like shaved head. To the school head. book depository? Yeah, to the book depository yeah, building. Yeah. Because it's a museum now, you mm-hmm. know? And I was like, walk- books used to be here. Yeah. They, we used to read them. We used to read. I'm like, get that. Show me where the guy got yeah. domed. <laughs> <laughs> Show me where that idiot got his wig split. <laughs> and I'm 12 walking around the book depository. I'm like, you know, she tried to pick his fucking brains up. Yeah, that yeah. dumb bitch. You know, and he was really horny too. Yeah. So she's picking up his horny brains. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the horniest president ever, and right. then his head exploded. I'm like, Did you see her ass when she reached for the brains, though? <laughs> Jackie O was caked up, low key. <laughs> she had the yams. <laughs> she had the. She had the. Yo, <laughs> yo, Aristotle Onassis ain't shit. <laughs> If I yeah, they still know about Aristotle. They know about They're like, if I was a shipping magnet, I would have been hidden that shit, dog. <laughs> no, I was I was walking in. I was I was twelve. More like the assy you no. Know. <laughs> <laughs> the the ass pruder film. Mm, hell yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm twelve, walking in, and this old, <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> You're twelve. You're walking into the school book, a school book depository with uh, your grandparents. Yeah. My grandparents. Yeah. yeah. Our grandparents. Our grandma. They're like, yeah. is this the book suppository? And they just <laughs> shove them up their asses. <laughs> so he pulled the gun out his ass and shot him. Um, <laughs> We're retarded. I know. We are very retarded. It's also, to let you know, it's 110 degrees it's outside so right now. The AC's not working. Right. So we like knew going in, we're like, this is going to be yeah. a wild one. Mm-hmm. Loopy. We, yeah. got our, we got our finger on the red button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the codes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So walking into the school depository, <laughs> I'm sorry that everybody in our story so far has been black, but there's another black guy <laughs> in a story. There was like an old guy who kind of looked like old Richard Pryor a little bit. And he just walked up to me. He's like, yeah, want to see some autopsy photos? And he held up JFK's head blown off <laughs> oh, on the gurney. He's like, $5. And my mom was like, my grandma was like, good, good heavens, get out of here. And yeah, it fucked me up a little Did bit. Did he act but, like it was uh, a mixtape where he's like, you have to give me $5 now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was in Times Square. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he followed me into the building. Um, no, but I was just like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to picture. And I remember his eyes were just fucking peeled open, staring at the ceiling. You could see the back of his head just like unfolded. I think I've seen that photo before. Fuck. Yeah, on the gurney. Yeah, which everybody should see. Just not at you know twelve years old. For whatever reason, they like scooped his brains out and then shipped him somewhere else. It was very strange. They lost his brains. They yeah. don't. They don't know what happened to his brains. I think Aristotle and Asus bought him. It's like an ultimate cucking. You know? so? Not only am I fucking your wife, I own your brains now. Maybe they put mm-hmm. his brain in a jar and like, yeah, they make him, his brain watch Jackie O get fucked. Right. I mean, Jag or Hoover probably ate it, if we're being honest. <laughs> he probably fried it up like Hannibal Lecter. All those fuckers were so weird. 
Barbara Bush had like a miscarriage and she she had like 40 miscarriages and had them all in jars and like put them around her bed mm-hmm. and she'd like kiss them goodnight. She'd oh, kiss the jar and go, I, I love you, Georgie Jr. Oh, God. Yeah, her children, they were so inbred just because <laughs> they were both so ugly. That's the only, they weren't related. Uh huh. H.W. and Barbara Bush were so ugly that the kids kept dying inside her uterus. Yeah, and yeah. he's also such an evil fuck. Like, she, yeah. of course his cum can't make life. Right. Yeah. They're like, oh, it, ter- it turns out cum, it's hard to turn it into the devil. So, <laughs> inside of your weird pussy. Yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, the doctor's like, I'm sorry, but the, the fetus died in your wife's womb. He's like, that's what we do. <laughs> That's 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 our specialty. Is yeah. That. Sorry. But, it looks like your cum carpet bombed all the other cum. <laughs> it's just yeah. in your jeans. My wife's uterus. It's like a shooting gallery down there. <laughs> it's a fucking free for all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. He they they would keep burying fetuses in like jars and shit. I think if I fun. think if I had a to, uh, a time machine, I'd go back to when uh, George H W Bush held up that baseball. Yeah. At the Astros game. And I would be in the at the top of the stands with a 50, 50 caliber like barrette, like like I like a Chris Kyle sniper rifle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'd blow his fucking head off when he held the ball up. And he's so he's so old. So that awesome. cl- he's so old in that clip. They would think his head just did that yeah. naturally. You, yeah, you get away with it for sure. Yeah, he would disintegrate. Have you seen that clip we're talking about, Devin? Uh, vaguely. Oh, I, mean, I got to show Devin this maybe clip. Maybe one point. Put it up. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. I mean, it literally looks like. Uh, it looks like he survived the grave. Like he he had the FBI kill the Grim Reaper and he wouldn't come for him. Hopefully it doesn't just show me a meme. I actually oh, want to no. see it. him. Yeah. Here you go. Gentlemen, we are joined by some very special guests for our ceremonial first pitch. First, he's trying to deport the team. Fuck you. He looks like he's looking at his whole life in front of him. He's being haunted by ghosts of his past. Dude, he goes, I got it from here, Pop. <laughs> yeah, George George Bush takes the baseball and loads it into a drone, <laughs> and it it shoots an Iraqi kid in the head at 400 miles an hour. Yeah. Can you imagine like looking like and being like, this guy's calm is the reason my wedding was bombed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. This guy right here. People love him though. Look at him go. He does have a he does have a swagger about him. No, right? he has a certain sex appeal about him. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing about George W. Bush is he's so oblivious. He started a painting. Look at that perfect strike. He didn't even go up to the uh, yeah. Now plate. he cheated. Mm-hmm. He started a painting series called uh, "The Immigrants uh, Like of the United States," mm-hmm. and he just paints different um, like immigrants who are in like the United States. It's literally like he literally was like he's like I'm gonna paint my victims. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. Wow. But he's great though. He gets drunk and hangs out with Michelle Obama. Yeah. 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 No. Every, everybody loves him now. Trump made it so they like nobody remembers the crimes of the Bush family. I know. It's hilarious. There's just like there's Obama at a press conference and like you know W like leans over and like squeezes her ass and yeah. she starts laughing. He's pre- he's clearly just unconsciously working through all that pain. He doesn't. He doesn't even realize it. Like I think. I think Nabokov said when he wrote Lolita why he was interested in, in like writing a book about a pedophile. Mm-hmm. This is what he said. <laughs> sure. In terms of writing a book about a guy who really like the whole book is about a guy who really wants a fucking kid real bad. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it, yeah. it's a you know it. It's a yeah. It's, it's hard, hard to. It's all hard our to fans read. about to read Lolita. Yeah. <laughs> all our fans are but, like, man, I was listening to the retard podcast while I paused. I was going to read Pale Fire. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I got to Lolita. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to read an 800-page poem that's weird and cryptic. Right. They're like, honey, put my Proustian manuscript down. I'm about to listen to Lemon Party. <laughs> uh, apparently, his inspiration for writing about the pedophile, and it's not that it's not he wants to fuck kids and he's the guy. Sure. Is he read a newspaper clipping back in like the 40s of uh, this guy who was studying apes. He was trying to get apes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're talking about apes in cages again. I know you guys made a rule. That no, I it's okay. To do this. You now you're making it weird. You were talking about actual <laughs> well, I animals. Well, this was a rule. You told me I no, wasn't allowed this to is do. No rule. <laughs> you said uh, you a new rule. You're not allowed to talk about monkeys or apes or anything. It's behind. A directly after a big race rip. Yeah. Yes, we were. But, ta- I think we were talking about Bill Russell, and then you brought up like the Brooklyn Zoo. Yeah, like, we were like. 
God. We're like, okay. <laughs> you can talk about it just, in, in, you know, if you went to the zoo. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Nabokov saw a newspaper clipping where this scientist, this guy who studied apes, he was trying to get this monkey to paint for the first time. Uh-huh. That's all he was trying to teach. You know, you teach monkeys languages and stuff. He goes, let me see if I can teach a monkey the arts. And he finally got a monkey to paint for the first time. And the his first his painting and the only thing he ever painted were his bars mm, that he was wow. in, his prison. Mm, so yeah. I, I like to think that's why H.W. draws immigrants all the time. Right. Yeah. Wait, so what's the Nabokov? Are his bars not being able to fuck a kid? That's why he wrote literally the book? just a guy who's in a in his own prison, and it's all he's uh, can, he's consumed with. The monkey didn't draw himself, you know, frolicking through a field or climbing mm. a thing and eating a banana and getting sucked off by another monkey, sure. who's also eating a banana. Or like fucking a, a frog. Or I something. would love it if if he was actually just trying to paint dicks, but he couldn't get the balls and shaft right. <laughs> and some some dweeby scientist is like, ah, it's a metaphor for us. Yeah. We're the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're both gay. Right. Yeah, I love a monkey. They're being like, well, monkeys, you know, they're smart and they can feel pain. It's like they they rip like dicks and faces off and like eat them. You yeah, know? they rip babies apart like fortune cookies. <laughs> yeah, no, they really and they do. like spike their heads and shit. They do mm. crazy stuff. Yeah. There's only cases of monkeys like ripping. Uh, I think I heard this on Rogan actually. <laughs> yeah, Ben, just play an episode of Rogan yeah, real quick. Sure. But it was like it was like a monkey. Um, he brought one. It was like a guy who was in charge of the monkeys, mm-hmm. and he brought one a birthday cake, and the one who didn't get a birthday cake ripped his hands and his feet off, and then like threw them like 800 yards like oh, away man. from him. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and Holy then the guy just turned into a human starfish, just laying on the ground. They do bone tomahawk shit where they like rip, they like rip ladies' legs off and their arms off so they can't move anywhere. So they're just like pillows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they just like (laughs) fuck them to death. They do crazy stuff. Yeah, they're like the they're like uh, they're like the Comanche. They're the closest we have to them. Well, you did it. You did it again. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) we got to keep you on a short leash. Doing this podcast, it feels like uh, when a dog is running really fast, mm. like to chase someone that's walking by, and all of a sudden the the the, ch- the leash like he goes yeah yeah like well, a dog. He's just the, like he's out. Ele- he's elevates for a few seconds like a dog in Mississippi in the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, we know what you're talking. Yeah, we about. know what dogs you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah. Human human dog whistle over here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so I just feel like I'm running so free, and then ah, shit. Right, and then a police officer's hand <laughs> yanks my chain back slightly. Yeah. So I can't I can't quite reach Fred Hampton. No, doing the podcast with Ben, it's like those uh, dogs in the long jump competitions. Yeah. Where you're like you hold racism and then Ben's running and you gotta throw it <laughs> and he leaps at it, but he never you don't want him to catch it. Yeah. The jump won't be It's quite like as crossing far. a bridge with a bunch of nitroglycerin and Ben just starts doing jumping jacks. And you're like, well, we're got we're about to blow yeah. up. smoking cigarettes. Yeah, no, you light the you light the TNT like it's a cigar. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you're in a Marx Brothers. You're, you're the guy in Saving Private Ryan when they have the sticky bombs at the end who holds it too long and just explodes. <laughs> I'm that guy. Yeah, you're the guy who gets the sticky bomb stuck to his hand and he's trying to like <laughs> shake it off. Yeah. I, if I was in Saving Private Ryan in that scene, by the way, because I have thought about this before, and I know you just watched the movie, I wouldn't give up my sock to make one of the sticky bombs because I'd be using it to jack off. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what that's what the sticky stuff was. Oh yeah, it's all yeah. use Avery's cum sack. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a yeah, it's a guy going. It's a guy named Brooklyn with a big wad of tobacco. He goes, God damn it, look at Avery's cum sock. <laughs> Put it in that panzer tank. <laughs> Yeah, no, you'd be used like a yeah human shield through a, a battle. But think of how many krauts I would kill. Mm. Would you? Yeah, I think so. You I, would know. I like if, to think I would get like I'd get over a hundred kills in World War Two, well, which is probably a record. Here's but. the thing: if you were in World War Two, they they'd send you to Germany and be like, "Can I fight in Japan? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> can I respawn in Okinawa, please?" <laughs> right. Like, what is respawning? You'd be helping Oppenheimer. You'd come in at the end and just be like, "Yeah, we'll just drop it here." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably do that. Yeah. I could see myself doing that. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Oppenheimer is like, he was just kind of maybe trying to invent like Japanese reality shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was his whole plan. It's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make really weird pornography <laughs> yeah. in 80 years. He goes, don't look at it more like a death machine. It's more like a porn machine. Right. Mm-hmm. So here's it. We dropped the bomb. 
80 years in the future, there's two Japanese women blowing a cockroach back and forth in a tube, and the loser has to eat it. Mm. What about that? (laughs) Because Japanese game shows are, they're like, hey, who gets shot with a cannonball the best? Yeah. 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 Yeah, who's gonna? It's it's who's gonna fuck this frog? The game show. Yeah, and it's just it's a little, one little frog on a on a stool, and there's just six Japanese guys staring at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, the, from what I can tell, the game show is the reward in itself. They're not competing for money. No, no. It's, it's they're a competing day off in from like work. yeah, they're competing in like <laughs> yeah. eating fish heads and like yeah, killing yeah, yeah. each other. And, and stuff. there's always like a Japanese lady in the corner, like lactating, just going like I, I. <laughs> yeah, there's and there's it's like a Monty Python. It's story. insane. It's crazy. There's always a host with like a four foot tall pompadour, and he's going. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you lose the game show, you're in a Logan Paul yeah. video in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like it's yeah, it's it's Japanese Regis film, and he goes, it and then he pulls out a gun and blows mm. their head off in front of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, Japan's, did you know Japan has a thing? If you go there, they don't like they can arrest you and put you in jail, but they never have to uh, like accuse you of anything or take you to trial. I've heard that. Yeah, there's Americans who have gone there and they're just like, oh, I'm gonna like you know steal a candy bar and they're in jail for two years with like no trial or lawyers or anything. So they can arrest you with no they reason. Like if they think you committed a crime, they can arrest you and then they they just interrogate you all day until you confess. And if you don't, they just keep. They can do a two week hold, and then at the end of every two weeks, a judge just keeps signing a new hold over and over again. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. weird. They have a, yeah, it seems they're always arresting a guy who's like stealing bubble gum or something. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is like the detectives, you know, work for like a few years and they finally bust a case where uh, like a high school uh, girl disappeared and it turns out she was raped 9,000 times. Yeah. <laughs> And then they finally get to the bottom of it and in- arrest an entire village of people. There are cases in Japan where they're like, yeah, this seven-year-old disappeared and she was raped by two six-year-olds. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> they did like weird, like yeah. the movie audition type shit. Yeah, it's really when you read about those cases, because there's a lot of famous cases like that where it's like children raping and killing other children. Mm hmm. And uh, when you look into it, you're like, the, the detectives should be like, they should be children too. Yeah, they like, should all should be There should just babies. be a kid division of the police force in Japan where they smoke cigarettes and have little like uh, briefcases and ride around on tricycles mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. There should be a little baby black chief that's always firing everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He goes, you're off the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be good. Yeah. Japan's fucked up. Yeah, just walking around with a briefcase full of shit. <laughs> Literal shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I imagine everywhere in Japan it just <laughs> it's trying to where I don't know like uh uh-huh. yeah it's a it's a honey you forgot your briefcase full of pee pee oh sorry Aru <laughs> going it's it's sloshing like a like a milk yeah. jug just walked like <laughs> that is very funny a Japanese guy in the subway his briefcase falls open and piss goes everywhere he goes oh sorry Aru and then he. He ceremonially gets on his knees and then drinks the piss off of the subway. Floor. Like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Japan. I mean, the subways in Japan are great because they literally put people in the overhead storage if it's too full. Yeah. Yeah. They, wait, really? No, I mean, I'm joking, but oh. have you seen those videos where it's like there's like it's 80 people over capacity and then they're pushing. 30 more people on the fucking train. It's insane. They do everything right over there. It's all about efficiency. They have suck me off bars. Have we talked about that? Yeah, that they have yeah we've, talk, we've talked about that a couple times. The blowjob bars. Yeah, you walk up, you go, I'd like to get sucked off, please. Mm-hmm. It's like a girl on roller skates. Like, she just gives you like a chocolate milkshake and then starts sucking you off. And weirdly, that makes them more productive because if we had that here, I would, like, I'd lose every job I've ever had. Yeah. Mm. I would never leave the suck off bar. They really live for the weekends. Yeah. Like, that's their whole life. I know it's it's you, very funny. They're going to TGI Fridays and getting like sucked off. Yeah, you know they're getting their oil changed, getting sucked off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you imagine like it's like we record the podcast, we're like, hey, you want to go to Chili's? We'll watch the Wizards game and get sucked off. <laughs> Not even like a premiere. Mm-hmm. It's like an off night basketball game. Yeah, yeah. Didn't their president Shinzo Abe? Didn't he get like killed with like a potato gun? Or yeah, something? <laughs> they like, blew his head off with a T-shirt Dude, cannon. He literally got killed with a Donkey Kong weapon. <laughs> It was, it was made out of like bamboo and coconuts. It was insane. They chopped his head off with a turtle shell. <laughs> no, I mean it was it was extremely badass. Yeah. yeah, it was literally like two tubes with like coke can 
tops. Yeah. yeah. Like crunched up into it. Yeah, you get killed with like a Pokemon ball. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Someone turned like a Nintendo 64 game controller into like a bong and then somehow turned that into a machine gun and killed them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's no inventive. Which They're show, really inventive. I mean, which shows how great Japanese people are. They have one gun in the entire country, and they killed the president with it. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I think we literally have two guns for every living human, and presidents have just been gan away, squeaky clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like they're orchestrating the whole thing. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Dude, you just blew my fucking mind right yeah. now. <laughs> right. Mind equals blown. Epically blown, sir. Epically blown again. Whew. Yeah, I think they also didn't they kill Shinzo Abe because he's like I'm raising the retirement age by like one day or something, <laughs> and they like blew his brains out. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, no, that was France. France was literally like, okay, we're raising the retirement age from 59 to 60, and they're like, we're burning fucking everything down. That's right. Wasn't something going on in France right now? Weren't they all rioting? Like, didn't a guy get shot by the police, and they're all pissed because it's like one less person to rape? <laughs> Yeah, somebody got shot by the police, and they're like, "It was yeah, it was a twelve year old." Mm. They're like, "That's a prime, prime view." <laughs> Roman Polanski's leading the charge. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I would never, if I was in France, I wouldn't like. I would never get in the, like you know, don't play hero over there if you see something going on. Mm. You'll get you'll get hung in the town square. If you see a guy, you know, going after a young something or another, just you know, just turn a blind eye. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. You just gotta. Let them, you know, win in Rome. You know, let them, let them do what they're gonna do. They yeah. love Serge Gainsbourg. They love uh, who's Serge Gainsbourg? He's that uh, guy who had a bunch of <clears throat> songs in France. He was a, <laughs> he was a big like pop culture, uh, like a, uh, uh, like a pop, he wrote like French pop songs and stuff, and they were all sexy. And he would be like, he had a song where he's like, oh, the, and it's it's like the bass line, like it's, it's stuff like that and he's like it, it, and he's talking in French but I'm just yeah. going to translate he's like it doesn't matter what is her age it doesn't matter uh-huh. what 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 gender is she it doesn't matter how young is she it doesn't matter don't ask and that was like the biggest song in France in like but nobody 1986 cares, it's like <laughs> yeah. 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 No, like, it sounds like, like really nice so romantic yeah right what is that song about ratatouille <laughs> what's it about <laughs> Like, oh, no, it's about how you should fuck babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I've talked about it in the show, but uh, not Japan, France, in the 70s, there was like a major movement to abolish the age of consent completely. And it was like there, like Neil deGrasse Tyson and like Bill Nye, the science guy, were like signing. Huh. They're like, you should be able to fuck babies. Like, this is a weird <laughs> esoteric law that I can't fuck a baby. How? That's the thing is like, how was it ever illegal there? Like, how did it ever become illegal to fuck babies? I think they accidentally made it illegal. <laughs> they accidentally where they, did? They were writing the age of consent, and they write they wrote four, and somebody accidentally put a one in front of it. <laughs> and they're like, fuck, chocolate blue. <laughs> fuck, I cannot fuck my baby niece. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot shove a big bread up a pussy. <laughs> You're just doing an Italian guy I now. know, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I found out, by the way, Charlotte Gainsbourg is the daughter of Serge Gainsbourg, and that tells you how fucked up that guy was. Who's Charlotte Gainsbourg? Did you ever see um, Nymphomaniac Part 1 or Part 2, the Lars von Trier movie? I'm aware of the movie. I'm aware of it, yeah. yeah. The movie is essentially like real sex scenes of her and Shia LaBeouf getting fucked by like huge guys from Africa. Hmm. That's like the whole movie, and everyone's like, it's the most, it's it's insane art. It's it's. I've never seen anything like it. It's just, it's literally, you see like Shia LaBeouf's cock going in and out of her ass. It's like a porno. They actually had sex in it and Supposedly stuff? they actually do fucking it. But the whole movie, she's an infomaniac. So she's constantly sucking off people, getting huge cock shoved in her ass, fucked in her mouth, Ooh, up her pussy. God. People coming on it's her, throwing of... her out windows, people beating <laughs> the shit out of her. Yeah. Some guy catches her like a marlin and then fucks her in the ear and then pushes her back in the ocean. It's and, crazy. And everyone at con just gives it like a two hour long standing no, ovation. Actually, I think everyone booed it for like 20 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, after it aired. It was one of those at cans where like everybody booed. They were like, boo, where are the children? <laughs> Why is she getting fucked by adults? This is a little disgusting. <laughs> Why is the sex a consensual? Why does the woman uh, want yeah. the sex? Yeah, it's, it's, it's premiering at cans and they see their first bit of pubic hair and they go, boo, <laughs> le boo. <laughs> 
Le, le, le bu, bu, le bu. Le bu. Uh, we so yeah, what pubic hair? They're like, yeah, with, with, with theater glasses. They're like, oh, I saw the hair le uh, they, they built the Eiffel Tower so they could spot children like a sniper. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I, I watched it because it's like uh, I watched like a clip of it to see what it was like. Because I'm not. A big oh, I really like the movie. I'm not a big Lars von Trier guy. The first, the first half I understand is like a Boogie Nights where it's like, hey, she's fucking and sucking and it's cool. In the second half, she is like fucking like two guys from Nigeria and they're just like slapping her around and like fighting each other. And yeah, they're shit. like seven feet tall and they have cocks that are ten feet long. Mm-hmm. Wow. And she's just like crying and bleeding and just screaming and beating the walls. Yeah. And Shia LaBeouf was like. Fuck, that's shit's crazy, dog. Is he French in it? No, he's just going in and out of different accents. <laughs> he, has, okay. he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> he yeah. is a great actor, but he doesn't know who he doesn't know who he is. Yeah, no, he has no. Yeah, that's why he's a great actor. Mm. Yeah, too yeah. bad he's not going to come back. No, he was he was MK Ultraed by uh, Michael Bay to shoot more Transformers movies. And his personality's been completely wiped. Yeah. That was his big break. He was in the first Transformers. I just know him from even Stevens. <laughs> He's great in Even Stevens. And right? Nymphomaniac. <laughs> that's that's the go, only two things you've ever... Is that Beans from Even Stevens? <laughs> or what do you play? Do you play Beans? Yeah, you're watching Honey Boy. You're like, oh, you're watching Honey Boy, dude? <laughs> and when they're showing Even Stevens being filmed, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes back yeah. to like moving art about a dad and a son. You're like, this is fucking... Get Boring. Back to, get, back to, get, back to, get back to Even Stevens. Go back to Beans, dude. <laughs> Have you seen Beans recently, by the way? Who is who? Who is Beans? Is Shia LaBeouf Beans? No, 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 no. no, no. That was the other, the fat weird kid. Yeah, there was a fat uh, weird kid who played Beans, and now he looks like a middle-aged alien. Now. Okay, and this is gonna bother me the whole show if <laughs> Dude, I don't look he this looks, up. He looks today. He looks like he's in Todd Browning's Freaks. He it's, looks like a larva. Yeah, it's very upsetting. <laughs> he looks like you pumped Jim Norton full of estri- uh, testosterone. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, dude! He looks like Vern Troyer's son. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, dude! He he looks like he runs a general contracting company for midgets. It's oh. insane. Wait, wait, I want to see. Here, I'm just gonna look him up on. Uh... He looks like he went to January 6th through the doggy door. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> 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 That's so funny. Hold on, let me see this fucker. Where is he? Show me his ass. Show me his ass. Oh, there yeah, he is whoa. now. Yeah. Stephen Anthony Lawrence. Hell yes. Yeah, I mean, dude, he looks terrible. Dude, weird autistic fucks in high school, uh, I feel like we're cosplaying as this guy sometimes. Like, they really, when Beans came on screen, I feel like they would all rise from their couch and, like, start clapping. Yeah. Freaks loved Beans. They oh, really yeah. connected with All them. the bowl people in New York came out from under the subway system. <laughs> <laughs> they went and watched it and went back down. Uh, Beans spawned so many characters, like, who can forget Gibby from Hannah Montana? Mm-hmm. And Gollum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I think what literally happens is he, he looked like a cute kid, and I think like Dan Schneider literally removes your pituitary gland at 12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they can squeeze a couple more seasons out of mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And yeah. now he has to do every OnlyFans Girls podcast. Well, that's Christy Carlson Romano from Even Stevens. Ah. She has a podcast that I think is 40 times bigger than ours now. Oh, well, okay. Well, yeah. Where I was just... about to shit on this podcast, but it's it's apparently it's the... I mean, be, the, as big he, as the he looks show. like the the inspiration for soft white underbelly. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Beans. Fuck, man. Well, when you cast as a character named Beans because you're all weird looking, yeah, probably there, there must be something. Doesn't get any better. Uh, who's a uh, you know Ron Howard? Uh, his what's his brother's name? Uh, um, I was gonna say Dwight Howard, but that's not yeah, right. That's, that's Ron, Ron brother. Howard's brother looks like a freak. Yeah, he's always looked like a freak, though. Yeah, he'll play like a crazy homeless guy in an Adam Howard. Sandler movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy. This guy's great and stuff. But yeah, yeah fucked up. Yeah, there must be like something really yeah. freeing. <laughs> Look at him as a Dude, kid. Dude, his face skin is made out of ball skin. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah, he got a skin graft from his balls. <laughs> Like, there's got to be something freeing about looking like that, And right? just not giving a fuck. Just being an ugly-ass motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a weird character actor kind of guy. Dude, he... <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean that I said? This is funny. He's, his face is, like, on a 65-inch screen. <laughs> I know. And we're all just staring at it. Dude, he looks like... Who's the guy who uh, created King of the Hill? What's his Mike name? Mike Judge? He looks like Mike Judge died in a submarine implosion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's Mike Fudge. Yeah, he got squeezed through a tube. 
Man, he wow. looks so fucked. But it must you you wake up, you go. You don't worry about like, oh, am I getting a wrinkle? Am I, oh, is my hair great? Like you, you're no, you know, you're you're retarded looking. Yeah, you look like a goddamn microwaved baby. He looks like when he was like seven years old. He had a big handkerchief on him at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Blow his nose yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. This, this guy, he just has to make sure he never becomes so deformed that drool starts coming out of his bottom lip, and he has to dab it with a hanky. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't want to become a hanky ugly. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he's fighting his eyelids to see. <laughs> yeah. He, he almost looks Chinese. He's so ugly. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Jace led me. Jace led me to water. <laughs> you, I just drank. You said the. I took a sip. Like I said, it's the dog. You got to. Th- that was my fault. I didn't throw the target far enough and he caught it in the air. <laughs> that was my fault. Oh, God. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very upsetting. But Ron Howard's much better looking. Yeah. See, I, I told you he's fucked, dude. Holy shit! That look, that turtleneck looks like it's keeping his head on his on his body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he takes that off, his neck gets four times it bigger. Falls right off. <laughs> I mean, Ron Howard doesn't look great himself. I mean, he's like seventy, so no, I'm just cl- being mean. Now. He clearly, like you know, God uh, was looking the other way, but but you know, he poured it all. And to Ron, I mean, he's making movies about the Beatles. He got to be a child star in the Andy Griffith show. He got to get his, molested his da- by Barney Fife. Yeah, his daughter has an uh, outrageous ass mm-hmm. for a white lady. Oh, yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's got a great, great ass. Do you think he got molested by Don Knotts on the set of Andy Griffith? Yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Was Don Knotts a, re- a pedophile? Supposedly he was a big gay guy. <laughs> Huge gay guy. Love being gay. Is that true? Yeah, he had tons of gay sex and stuff. <laughs> right or maybe it was just he loved prostitutes i forget what I think, it was i think he loved pussy oh he just loved pussy yeah i've heard stories about like he would like just grab a woman off a threes company and like you know <clears> all <throat> of a sudden she's in his like condo in palm springs okay i'll look it up what? his uh daughter donut's daughter does uh stand up and it's very upsetting oh no really i think her name's paula knots or something Ooh, like that look at don knots he looks like ichabod crane <laughs> <laughs> Man, imagine sucking, looking up from this guy's dick. <laughs> Just looking up from it, you know? Imagine. His, his dick has that same haircut. God, imagine him yeah. taking off that shirt. Yeah imagine, you. yeah, imagine you're like a young star in the 70s. You've taken a ro- couple wrong steps. You're sucking off Don Knotts while he goes, Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, Andy, I'm going to come. Uh, I'm gonna come in your pussy. Maybe I'm thinking of Gomer Pyle. I'm pretty sure he was gay. Gomer Pyle was gay. Yeah. Jim Neighbors yeah, yeah. was very gay. Hell of a s- some pipes <laughs> on that guy, by the way. Have you heard him sing? What? Are, what what's so funny? Hell of some <laughs> yeah. pipes. On- you turned into Joe Buck for a second. <laughs> you turned to me and you're like, to the digs, to the 25, to the 19. Jim Neighbors singing. Hopefully this is Hell in yeah. uh, Play that. like why well, I don't want to do one that's yeah. too uh here we go, vintage video clips. And as we all know, he played Gomer Pyle the retard on the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. And but it, apparently he was a gay guy who was a great singer. Siamo <laughs> qui. Jesus. Wow. That's amazing. Belt it out, buddy. Hell yeah. I wish Dude. there was something more high quality oh, yeah. I could play. He has really good Christmas albums. That's what happens when you <laughs> suck enough pipe. <laughs> it makes your yeah lungs stronger. Yeah. I do love that that was old Hollywood, that you could be the most talented guy in the world, and then you're on TV in front of 80 million people going like, Oh, oh Andy. <laughs> Oh, dude, apparently in the Andy Griffith show, he, like, sang once. Well, there was always an episode where, yeah. Where he has to sing for Mayberry? I think this is... In, so, Gomer Pyle got so popular on the Andy Griffith show that Andy That's Griffith... That's right, yeah. Andy Griffith was like, get his fucking gay ass out of here. Oh, really? Like, he's, stealing, he's stealing my fucking... Stealing my fucking hey. thunder. I'm, I'm Matlock, goddammit. And so they made a show called... I think private pile where what the fuck scroll past that do not click on that 
Ben. Oh, no. Ben. <laughs> what is that? Do not play Judy Garland in blackface. <laughs> oh, my God. Do not do that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> yeah, so they made a show called... <laughs> God, I saw that come up, and I could. I Ben's his hand was twitching like he was in liar liar. What are you about to type in 4K footage of Judy Garland in blackface? <laughs> I want the remastered version. I'm just gonna. I just type in 4K of anything just of so we moon. can have something playing. Uh, here of the space. Here people landing in space. There we go. And I can it's turn still back popped around. up for half a second. <laughs> it still popped back. Up. Right. Your computer knows what you're about to play. <laughs> Your computer's like really, really, dude. Oh man! Uh, sorry, just what were you saying about? So Jim Neighbors, Andy Griffith was like, "Get his gang, get his gang out, out, of out of here!" here. And then they made a show called Private Pile, um, where uh, uh, Gomer Pile goes to a POW camp in Okinawa, <laughs> and he gets tortured for every episode. They wanted to put him in a camp, mm-hmm. but yeah, on it's, television, it's him because Andy's like, "We want to put him in a camp," and they go, "We can do that in a TV show." He goes. Fine. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, it's like they're like, you remember Hogan here Hogan's heroes? What if it was just Asian guy just being the shit out of Jim Neighbors? <laughs> Shoving bamboo up his fingernails and just whipping his ass with reeds. Yeah. And Andy Griffith is like, whatever, dude. Me and Don are trying to get a lot of pussy. Yeah. So we gotta get him out of here. No, it was it was obviously it was him in the military, but it's just funny to imagine like that character just dying on Normandy. <laughs> <laughs> like just like like eighty episodes of him just being like I don't know how to what hand do I salute with and then just getting just ripped in half by German bullets yeah getting Swiss cheesed by a Gatling gun mm-hmm. they have to the soldier like gives his uh, mom the flag folded up mm. and knocks on Gomer Pyle's mom's door and she she's all cross eyed she's like please die please die Keeps- I'm also retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He put in marshmallows in front of the flamethrowers. <laughs> yeah, but no, so he was secretly... A lot of guys, um, the dad from the Brady Bunch was a Shakespearean trained actor. He was secretly gay and he died of uh, AIDS as well. Uh, Jace, he died of HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. <laughs> okay. Please. Yeah, you're the guy who's People like... People are very insensitive about You're this. the guy who's like, technically it's a uh, febophilia, <laughs> not pedophilia. Every libertarian. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a guy. I'm I, I uh, I'm an expert on AIDS, actually. Mm. Yeah, I'm the AIDS expert. That's what everyone else yep. does too. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm gonna start dressing like Jordan Peterson, and I'm gonna go on every. Because by the way, like when it comes to like let's say trans people weren't like a big issue, then no one would would give a shit because they're only talking about everybody that talks about the same three topics has complete contempt for humanity and then they they talk about all of these subjects as if they actually care about the direction right. the world is going right, right. but they're just t- everybody's talking about one thing and they stand in front of it so they can get more eyeballs on them so they can make more money right yeah that's the only reason they talk about this shit so uh if aids was really big we would literally have like if there was a point of of contention that people had everybody had a take on aids we would have a jordan peterson guy but for aids making the rounds on every podcast dressed up like some weird joker men's warehouse guy and he's like well actually it's hiv plus the virus that causes AIDS." like that would be the whole thing on every podcast yeah we need to get people. We need to get people to give a shit about like AIDS and like HIV and stuff. So this starts to become like the culture war. It's just people. I want. I, I'm just sick of the same three subjects. What they do is they play a game called tag your it. <laughs> you can't even go to a good nightclub anymore. Can't even go to a good nightclub. I go to the nightclub. I'm trying to get some strange <laughs> and all these goddamn gay bloody bastards. With their there. bloody AIDS. Poking people. With their bloody AIDS. You can't, you can't masturbate in a theater in New York City without a gay man trying to fuck you and give you AIDS. It was me and Fred Willard. And then these goddamn bloody gay bastards. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very, fu- it's very funny watching everybody's insane scams in real time. Yeah. Like Jordan. I mean, I was talking in the car like Ron DeSantis is literally like signing bills like, we're going to launch kids into space so he can lose the Republican nomination. <laughs> yeah. Ron DeSantis is just going like, we passed a law. Um, we're going to feed kids to sharks. Mm. And there's like 2% approval rating. Yeah. We're going to put them in cannons and shoot them in the ocean. Did you and see? Like 3% of people are like, I don't know. Sounds like a good idea. You're in charge. <laughs> yeah. Did you see his mm, hungry video, by the way? Yep. Wait, what? Oh, Ben. Ron, you haven't seen this? Wait, what? Can you type in? I don't want to ruin it for you. Type in Ron DeSantis hu- mm. hungry. Mm, hungry. Mm, hungry. He goes, 
Mm. Wait, wait, let him, let him watch it, though. Here we go. He goes, Ron DeSantis, blackface. <laughs> wait, wait, mm, hungry? Yeah. Yeah, mm, hungry. Um, scroll down, scroll down. Do they mm. not fucking have it it's on YouTube? It's not on fucking YouTube. Are you fucking kidding Tell me? Tell Ron DeSangri- DeSantis, hung we. Yeah. Hung we. W. Instead of an R. Okay, hold on. What the fuck is with YouTube? Fuck off. I Give know. it to us. Nothing showing up. God. I don't know. Can you type it into just Google with like a Twitter link? Because that's the only place like fucking. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Elon. It's the only place where anything's allowed these days. No, don't get me started. Don't get me goddamn started. Thank you, Twitter. Elon, for X. Yeah, here we go. Here I have to go, go to Business Insider India to watch this. You truly have to read stuff from like third world countries yeah. to like figure out about America. <laughs> oh, Ron DeSantis was so fucking cringe the other day. In other news, oh, it's in it? other news, snakes are coming out of baskets. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's a fake video. No, it's not. It says right here, it's fake. Mm-mm, it's not. It says it's fake. It's a lip. It's a lip sync thing. Mm-mm. I don't no. think it's fake. I don't think it's fake. That's just India is, is doing. They're running a damage control for him. Oh come on! I, I don't. I don't think this friend. is it. Oh, look. It's what it says. It is. Does he own Business it's a, Insider? I India? think it's a different video. <clears throat> mm, hungry. God damn it! It's Forbes says it's fake. Fuck. So it was fake. Fuck man. God damn it! Everything is so worthless. Okay, well, edit that out of the episode so people still think I'm smart. You can't even. <laughs> you can't even enjoy it. God damn it! I hate the fucking. I do despise the Twitter note now because something will be like hilarious. And then it'll be like, this was completely fabricated. You're like, I'm pretending. Yeah, I had enough. I'm pretending I didn't see that. Enough of the truth. We're over that. This is real, though. This is a very funny clip of him greeting people like an autistic retard. Watch how he walks into this business. Wow, look at this. You guys got, hi, how are you guys? Good to see you. So what do you got? Go right over here? Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Crowded, huh? Wow. Hey, how are you doing? It smells really good, I'll tell you that. So we'll do it. Okay. Okay. How you doing? What's your name? I'm Tim Hansen. Okay. How are you? I'm wonderful. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Dude, that's my that's my favorite is being a politician, but so autistic. You're like, I'm Tim Anthony. Okay. He goes, okay. That is your name. Interesting. <laughs> wow. He doesn't look at people like they're people. Yeah. No. I mean, he ta- he talks like he tiptoes everywhere and has a leash tied to his parent. <laughs> <laughs> like he talks like an autistic kid at Disneyland yeah, trying to really get ice does. cream. God damn. Yeah. I wish that was real, but damn it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, we can still watch Hillary's America from 2016. Hey, there we go. Oh. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Love that. Fuck yeah. It takes a village yeah. <laughs> to exploit for your fake foundation. <laughs> famous, famous quote. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. We can watch some John Daly stuff. Here we go. Okay, yeah, it's great. Better than Hillary. Um, were we talking? We were talking about uh, Gomer Pyle having AIDS. Yeah, um, the dad from the Brady Brunch having AIDS. Mm-hmm. Pedophilia in France. Yeah, we we're doing a lot of great. Uh, yeah, bits. Charlotte Gainsbourg. We covered it all. Yeah. Can we talk about JetBlue for a second? Yeah, I know we talked about that. Go ahead. In person. You guys are really pent up about this. I've been such an advocate for JetBlue. They can and suck I, my cock, I, dude. Yeah, we flew out of we flew out of JFK on consecutive days back to LA, and I told I told you guys in person it's like going to the Anthony Kumi experience. <laughs> it's like putting on VR goggles that make you racist. Mm-hmm. It was insane. Yeah, it's it yeah, you was, went to you went to boarding school at Anthony Camilla University. I saw basically. a Puerto Rican guy in front of me hit his wife in line. <laughs> How did he hit her, dude? It was literally like it was like this old, like you know, like you're in line at, at TSA where they, I think they just like you know, like the TSA at JFK. You're like, then we might get shot at the end of this. Like like you're at Doc Cow or something. Yeah. And a guy, it was like a family of like 18 crippled Puerto Rican people in front of me. Like the whole family was crippled except mm-hmm. for like the dad and the mom. And the daddy's bald. He's kind of like stumbling around. And she said something in Spanish. And he goes. <laughs> and he back, he backhanded her in the shoulder like as hard as he could. And mm. she like stumbled over on one foot. Literally, can you do it to my hand as if it was. Yeah, her? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, do it. Do re- the exact. I'm going to do real force. OK, okay. I'm going to try not to. OK, put your hand like that a little okay. bit. He went like. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. 
fucking Jake That's LaMotta. That's crazy. Or, yeah. I wouldn't mm-hmm. hit a dog that hard. Mm-hmm. No, but it, all of TSA cheered, <laughs> and they let him through. Yeah, they gave they, they walked out with a first-class golden <laughs> ticket. And they go, sir, you get to fly the plane out of this shithole. <laughs> Unbelievable, dude! How 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 awful everyone was treated when on, I was there on JetBlue. It was well, just in at JFK and then on JetBlue. JetBlue mm. is just like it's like a flying wagon train at this point. <laughs> mm. It takes you like three days to get wherever you're going. Yeah. They did. They took us to like Pittsburgh for two hours, and they just like made up some shit. The flight attendants were like getting off and like getting bagel sandwiches. We were like, is anyone? work here are mm. we alone mm. yeah yeah the, the uh. pilots like ghost ride in a jet blue plane yeah they like get out for a he's second he's ghost riding the whip <laughs> yeah. outside in the sky <laughs> like, like hey <laughs> hey yo <laughs> he's like i right, fuck it we're going to miami bitch mm. just turns the plane yeah i had um a fucking i had i was sitting in the middle row because i bought my tickets late so i'm in the middle aisle which i mm. get i suck there's a little tiny like New York like just a, a walking De- Derek Jeter poster. Yeah, yeah, guy. Sure, yeah. Like uh, Italian guy, faded haircut. He's five foot tall, and he he. Uh, I sit down. He goes, "These seats are pretty tight, huh?" And I was, I gave him one of those. Yeah, sure. And then <laughs> like a minute later, he's like, "I'm from Queens originally." I go, "Uh huh." <laughs> I had to because it's a six hour flight. I, I had to be like, "Uh huh," like like the equivalent of being like, "Don't." You don't exist yeah. in yeah. my head right now. Just don't resort to violence. Yeah. I'm giving you a oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. do I get them to stop talking to me? You put on Boys in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to muffle you with a pizza, shove yeah. it down your throat. God. Um, and then the guy next to me was like, I think the guy had like severe autism. Um, he was like uh, five foot two, like 90 pounds, and he was reading a dragon book. And it was like midnight, so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll get some shut eye on the fucking red eye. And then I see this this autistic guy open this giant dragon book and then just turn on both fucking lights like spot beams. <laughs> he turned on and all the lights. Dude, he turned on all the lights and pointed out. I'm like, okay, great. I'm not going to sleep at all. Mm. And then um, he kept doing this thing where he would, uh, Gracie, fucking knock it off, She's dude. been licking you for like 15 minutes. And you're a fucking whore. Um, <laughs> bitch, fuck you. You treat I'm her sorry. like that Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hit her like a, she's my wife at JFK. Um, but he would do the, he would do this thing where he's sitting to the left of me, and then he would just turn and look at me, and I could feel him looking at me, and then I would, I'd, be, I'd look want, at, yeah, I'd look at him, and then he would just go like ramrod straight ahead again. I sat next to a giant fat lady. I was in the window seat, and I after the first few hours, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna watch a movie or something, make this go by quicker. Uh-huh. I put it on. It's on for like five minutes and then it keeps pausing and, and stopping and pausing and stopping. And I look over and the fat lady has fallen asleep on the remote on my seat. Because the remote's on the armchair. On the armchair. Mm. So yeah. I'm like considering like so I keep kind of like trying to nudge her to like kind of wake her up. But mm. I'm not trying to, you know, be mm-hmm. the, like be the reason she woke up. But she's so mind. big. You got to hit her like a linebacker. Would it happened to kind of the wake next her up. three and a half hours. She ruined every movie I was watching <laughs> with her fat. <laughs> it was uh, it was fucking right. insane. Literally, dude. your only option is to shove like a popsicle stick between the armchair and her body yeah. to keep the flab. I was like, should I try and deflate her? <laughs> like, if I poke her with a needle, will maybe like the arm pop? Yeah, you can deflate her arm. Oh, yeah. what a nightmare! Yeah, dude, I was in I was in uh, the TSA. The TSA to check your bag was a thirty minute wait. Yep. And I told you I got to the front and there was like this older black woman and I tried to be very. I was like, how are you doing today? And she goes. And then just snatch my fucking yeah. ID. And, and then ticket. you hand them your bag and they like fucking body slam it. <laughs> they like call out like the rock and he yeah. like jumps on it a bunch of times. And they throw it in. Dude, I didn't even I, I went to hand her my bag and she like she just did the thing where she reached for it and then like put her hand down. I like almost dropped yeah. my own bag. And I was like, oh, and then I loaded the bag. Yeah, I put it machine. on for them. Yes. They're just standing there like drooling. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I got away from that that crippled Puerto Rican family, um, and then I got a line behind another guy who looked like um, obese Pauly D from the Jersey Shore. Mm. Like he had the hair and like the giant fucking Kanye West slick sunglasses. Yeah, the fat's coming out through the slits. Right. And the glasses. And I swear, I swear to God, like he got there and he put like his whole like he put a bag that said "There's a computer in here" on the thing, mm. and the guy comes laptops out to you, bam. <laughs> yep. And the guy's like, "We gotta take the lab to shit." And yeah. then he's like, he's like pulling out, you know, like fucking Rohifnol and <laughs> fucking tiny dick condoms. And then the guy go, I swear to God, the guy goes, and he's still wearing the Kanye West yeah. sunglasses. The guy goes, and he's like, "You gotta take your jewelry off." 
And he's like, ah, he's wearing like nine chains. He takes one chain off. And he's like, all of them. And then he kept, he kept, yeah. he kept going. He's like, this one too? And he's like, what is that made of? He's like, gold. He's like, yeah, take it off. Yeah. It's metal. It's like a swag clown where <laughs> like they just keep pulling the thing out of their arm. <laughs> Dude, I had I, they have this also. JetBlue has this ridiculous thing where it's like no carry on, but every time you fly, they you you don't really need to check your bag if it's like a small duffel bag. Mm-hmm. So I got there, no issue. Said no carry on. They let me on the way back in JFK just because they all want to kill themselves there. I'm standing in line. I get I show my boarding pass. The lady just looks at me and she goes, "Your bag big," <laughs> and I go, "Oh, I mean, it's I brought it here on the same flight and it fits right under my seat. It's mm. my personal item, technically." And she goes, "Sir, get over there." <laughs> and then I go to some other lady and they make me like put it on the thing and the lady I, I go, "Lady, I swear to god I got here with it. It's the same size. It's my it's not my carry-on. It's my personal item." Mm-hmm. Mm. She goes, "Sir, Check the bag. <laughs> like it, it felt like in anger management when when you're like not screaming and they're like keep your voice down. You get tased. I wind up in like mm. on a big pile of people. Yeah, you mm-hmm. end up in Rikers. I yeah. can't believe people fly that much. It was so hard to get to New York. Yeah, yeah. I because th- I thought I flew out of LAX. I was like, oh my god, this is a fucking bus stop. This is insane. And then I got to JFK a week later. I was like, this is. This is hell on earth. Yeah. This is horrific. It's yeah. kind of turning into the Oregon Trail where like you take a flight and people are dying of like diphtheria. Like people mm-hmm. are being bit by rattlesnakes. <laughs> people are cutting open their wounds with knives and sucking out the poison. Yeah, dude, you like eat like a thing of popcorn from the fucking mm-hmm. no tax place and you yeah, you just shit your brains out and die in a toilet. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Dude, I was, yeah, I was the, the toilet's occupied because someone died in yeah, it. Yeah, my flight's locked. Yeah, my flight got delayed like four hours because I don't know, it probably crashed or something mm. and they had to like clean the dead bodies it's, out. it's really insane there's like women like on the conveyor belt going through the x-ray machine just giving birth they just put a, a woman on it yeah a woman's like at TSA she pulls her baby out of her pussy and puts it on the puts baggage on the dude I've been on a plane before where same flight I got thrown up on by some some uh, retarded guy who passed out and just he blew chunks everywhere all over me and they're like the flight attendant's like yeah, we don't have anything to help clean that, so... Yeah, it's over. And then they just stared at me, and I was like, all right, I'm on my own, I guess. I guess I'll roll around on the ground. Mm-hmm. I don't even I don't even know what the protocol is here. But same flight, some guy uh, uh, went, to the, went to the restroom and just started smoking cigarettes in there. Mm-hmm. Did they stop 22-year-old, like, Latino guy. Yeah, they, like, they were... They were people were there was clearly it smelled like cigarettes like there was a guy some everyone I've literally every one on the plane was like who is smoking cigarettes on the plane yeah <laughs> what is going on and then the flight attendant was sp- sprinted back there and pounded on the door until he finally came out yeah and yeah. then they escorted him to his seat and then they handed him a thing that he'd be fined a bunch yeah. of money on on um on my flight flight back to LA I'm not kidding there was a dog that was trying to attack people on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> on the airplane so it's just turning into a flying prison yeah you're yeah. Like in the prison yard dude yeah. and it was a bumpy fly like we're bouncing back and forth and the, you could tell the pilot doesn't care anymore mm-hmm. like you're bouncing the pilot's like uh, we're gonna we're gonna fly straight into the turbulence because I don't give a shit anymore. And there was like a guy that was like the only non-gay stewardess on a plane I've ever seen. He looked like one of the he looked like the warthog from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like with the mohawk yeah. and the sunglasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that guy. And he's handing out like, you know, like nine peanuts in a bag. And the dog tried to bite his hand as he was handing the peanuts out. And he like got in the lady's face. Like, you should get that fucking dog. You fucking shut that fucking dog up. And it, just, it barked the whole flight. Mm-hmm. I'm on. It cost. By the way, it cost me five hundred dollars to fly a round <laughs> trip. I'm like, how do these people have money to get on an airplane? That's a pretty good, pretty good price, too. I know that's the sad part, but that's actually you wonder cheap. like where are they? What are yeah. they doing? Half the people I feel like go to New York just to get flavored vapes <laughs> and then fly back to L.A. I don't. It was insane. Dude. There's people you know mm. when you're on a when you vape mm. and you're on a plane, you like ghost it. You know if mm. you have to do it, you hold it in enough so there's no. There's fumes almost stuff. nothing left N- nowadays, dude. It's just people are just blowing O's <laughs> yeah, in the plane. That's mm-hmm. great. Nobody cares. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like got a big bag of peanuts and started throwing shells on the ground like it's a fucking baseball game. <laughs> like 
fucking Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, dude, I, I expected a cowboy to be spitting, <laughs> yeah. chewing tobacco into the into the seat next to. Eventually, him. flight attendants are gonna go up and down the aisle on horseback <laughs> with like a shotgun and stuff. Yeah, like it's a prison. Yeah. Game. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, ladies and gentlemen, we've just heard there's some birds up ahead, so the pilot's gonna head for those. <laughs> <laughs> we were all yeah. suicidal. I bought I bought the tickets back late because I didn't know when I was flying back, and I got there and I was like, "Fuck, I'm in a middle seat, like row 27." I'm like, "You know what? Fuck it, I'll upgrade." And there was like one seat in an exit row, and I click on it's like to upgrade. It's two hundred and thirty dollars. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Even the crazy. first class looks like shit. I'm like, what are these people even paying for? I know. They're just it's like they get slapped less yeah. by the flight attendant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first class is not even full of rich people anymore. No, it's full of like, first class. I'm like going to see like a pigeon lady from like Central Park on there. <laughs> She's got twenty birds with her. That's why I can't really get mad at the people flying pi- private. I'm like it makes sense. If I had the money, I'd probably do it too. If I had to fly, yeah. If you're Taylor Swift or something, yeah. People yeah. do complain. They're like, oh, the car. Like, what is she gonna like? Yeah, she's gonna fly out of JFK and get stabbed to death. Mm-hmm. What are you yeah, talking because about? the the chances of someone on a jet blue fl- flight being a Taylor Swift stalker, it's like a hundred percent very of the time. high. Yeah. someone who would kill her with a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, jet blue is supposed to be like the nice airline to fly. It used to be at least. I it can't used even, to be. I haven't flown Spirit in years. I wouldn't be surprised if you got on a Spirit flight and it's on fire while you're yeah. flying. Spirit is just a big bird. <laughs> yeah. They tell you to hop on the back. It's of. a phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a mythological bird. And I guess this has always been a thing, but everyone on flights, if you give them any eye contact and say one thing, they tell you everything going on with them. Mm-hmm. They tell you their whole life, what they do. Yeah, they're like, oh, great, he's trapped with me. Mm-hmm. Someone who can't leave me for once in my mm-hmm. life. They go, you'll be my dad. <laughs> As the next old lady when she goes, uh, yeah, I had a real good time in L.A., this time. I go, she goes, second time. I go, second time doing what? She goes, coming to L.A., I go, oh, why, why do you why do you come to L.A.? She's like, one reason, rehab. Second time. I was like, okay. All right. And then she just told me, she's like, yeah, I'm giving it another go. Think I'm really going to do it this time? Right. And then she, yeah. The, the she's like, I'm, I'm, right, I'm flying on this plane. I'm not going to order a cocktail, which I always do. Because she's, she's in that stage where she's going to do something and not drink. Yes. I'm going to go to the park and not drink. I'm going to go to bed and not drink. I'm going to wake up and not drink. I'm going to go to the bar and drink. <laughs> yeah. They go, fuck, I fucked it up. Right. Because those, are the, again. those <laughs> are the people who spend 30 days in a rehab and they're like, I'm healed. And they step one foot out and like <laughs> they pick up a cocktail somehow and start drinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Now I was in I was in line to buy because my flight kept getting delayed. I was getting like a beef jerky and a Gatorade. Mm-hmm. It was like a twenty person line. There's no restaurants. There's not even like there's, a, a, there's not even a Cinnabon Mm-mm. at fucking JFK. I'm in line. A Russian guy tries to sneak in front of me <laughs> in the middle of like a guy for, like who dies in no Russian. That type of guy. Dude, Russians do this shit. By the way, it, they cut in front of everybody. Here's I'm what fucking sick here's what it. even made me matter. He tried to. What he did was he was like. He had his back turned to me, like like flanking me from the side, mm-hmm. and he was looking up at the ceiling with the thing he was going to buy, and he was just trying to slowly back up <laughs> in front of me, looking at the ceiling. Like He's like, oh, I'm checking out the sprinklers. Oh, I guess I'm in line. And I was just like, I was so... Like I said, this is the most racist I've ever felt in my life. Um, you can't be racist against other white countries, though. This is fine. No, no. I mean, I was just... I was like not having it. So I'm literally doing the... It turns you into an asshole where I'm literally like... I'm doing like an NBA box out on a Russian guy trying to cut in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm having to swing my leg in front of him and like hook him with my hip Mm -hmm. behind me. And then we finally get to the front. I check out. He, as I'm checking out, he just goes, you take this. And I don't know what he held up. And she's like, we don't take that. And they took cash and cards. So I think he held up like a traveler's check. Or like literally gold coins He held up like his movie pass card (laughs) from 2017. I hated that fucking place. Guy tried to cut in front of me in the in the line to just go through fucking TSA mm-hmm. over and over again. I'm like, there's an obvious order here, mm. you piece of shit. Yeah. Can I say everybody is really nice to me when I fly, and I think it's because they suspect I may have a gun. <laughs> you look it. The yeah. way I'm walking and the, 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 I'm, mu- yeah. I'm muttering to myself. You're like, and they go, oh, sir, can I help you with your bags right here? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're just zipping it open, looking in it. You walk into J- <laughs> you walk into JFK, they assume you're Steve Buscemi and Con Air. <laughs> <laughs> that they, they just let you out of the harnesses to fly. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's so sweet to me. The TSA guys always like triple, like when they put my ID in that little thing. He always looks back at the computer screen and then like looks back at me. Mm-hmm. He does that like nine times and he goes, do you know where you're flying today? And I'm like, uh, where my wife says we're flying. 
And he's like, which is where? And I'm like, I think it's Phoenix. And he's like, okay. And he just hands me my ID and I'm, he's like, go on. Right. Well, Katie sends you to the airport with a note pinned to your chest that says if lost. Like, yeah, they sta- she staples $20 to a note yeah. and wrapped your gra- around my neck. Your grandma's phone number because she's picking you up. <laughs> they do. The TSA legitimately does a mental health checks on me. And I think it's because the FBI came to my house that one time. Well, yeah. Which we, we'll, we'll talk you about You think that eventually. shows up? Oh, I think that uh, 100% shows up. I think up. it probably shows up and they say do a mental like welfare check on this person to make sure he's not like on his way to, you know, blow up something. Right. So they have a mental patient do the mental <laughs> yeah. checkup on Yeah, you. a guy yeah. who's hanging by a thread checking someone else's thread they're hanging by. Yeah. That sounds A good. guy who has duct tape around a big slit in his <laughs> neck. Mm-hmm. Gives you a mental health checkup. Yeah. yeah. What well, this hostage? Hey, you, the hostages check in with right. each other. The TSA guys are so poor. If they have like a broken leg, they stick their foot in the scanner machine because they can't afford to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, they're doing their own surgeries. Yeah, it's w- while on the job. It's truly like a hell on earth. I hate it so goddamn mm-hmm. much. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I hate. Fl- I have to fly. Fuck, and I have to fly tomorrow. But there's so many other airports that are Paso. nice, but God, the major ones, unbelievable. There's no customer service like whatsoever. Yeah. They have no need to treat you okay. Uh, if you could get a flight from Burbank to Boston, that would change my life. Mm-hmm. But I'm having to do LAX to fucking like Logan, mm-hmm. JFK all the goddamn time. It's miserable. Yeah, I hope my plane, I hope it uh, like crashes somewhere in Mexico and I can just start a new life. Because I'm going to El Paso and... I think the way the hemis like the the curvature of the Earth works, I think I have to like. If you ever look on that thing, like if you're flying somewhere, like you have to do you have to do like this shit because mm. the Earth is flat, so it's not like a straight line. Right. So the way it works is you're like, I'm going to El Paso, but how am I going all the way up into Canada and down? I can't remember which way it goes, mm-hmm. but uh, it would be maybe I'll fly fucking over Mexico City and then crash and just start a new life and. Just ruin that place. That'd be cool. I'd like to join all the new white people that are ruining Mexico and making it hard to live there. In Mexico City, yeah. I like that we're doing to other countries what we've done here. Mm -hmm. We're we're infecting it with uh, all of our... We're opening up boba shops. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, you know, just walking around with a guitar on the beach. We're inventing being homeless in other countries. Yeah. You know, I've always, We're showing up to other countries and being homeless. I've always thought Mexico City needed a La Colombe <laughs> coffee roasters. <laughs> La Colombe. Is that how you say that shit? <laughs> Whatever. La Colombe. La Colombe. Dude, let's move to Mexico City and open a blue bottle coffee. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let, let's let's open a place where coffee is $40 and it sucks. Yeah. yeah. I do. There are so many tech workers who are like living in Los Feliz and they go to their neighbors. And they're like, where do your grandparents live? Okay. I'm going to go kick them out too. <laughs> yeah. We're going from door yeah. to door and asking people where their grandparents are, fr- are from. So we yeah. can destroy so that place. I'm gentrifying down a family tree. <laughs> I get to Mexico City. Once I gentrify that, I'm like, so you guys come from Spain? All right. And then first class ticket <laughs> yeah, across the pond. Cla- oh, to Lisbon then? Yeah. Last right. week I paid. Painted over your your child's height chart. <laughs> Used to be a family on Pupuseria, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. You drive through Echo Park at this point. There's just people eating brunch on top of a Mexican guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> the head is the plate. Yeah. They have like yeah. They have like human sherpas to get like through like Highland <laughs> Avenue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, COVID killed the fruit guys' business, by the way, because no one has cash anymore. I never see those fruit. I used to see those fruit guys like, you know, they they couldn't keep up. Their knives were cutting through mm-hmm. watermelons and pineapples. Like you wouldn't believe it. Now I just see them sitting there. There's flies buzzing all around the fruit. Anytime I have cash, I mean, I see my local guy. I do buy it, and right. I don't even. The like fruit's it. great. You just, yeah. yeah, you throw it out right. after you. I go, I go here. Thank you. Have it for lunch. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, you buy it and then you hand it to him. No, I mean I'll have it sometimes, but sometimes I like don't want like a coconut, mm-hmm. but I'll just because I know that the guy's like oh, he's been there my whole life. Yeah. So if I, I you're just his only have customer. Cash. Yeah. yeah. The only one. You're like, how about you stop doing this and every day I give you $5? Yeah, yeah. Well, Senor Rockefeller, thank you again. <laughs> I've, yeah. I remember going to one of those one time and I forget. I think I was like really tired. Like I had pulled an all night or something and I was just like in a bad mood. And it was, I just needed, like, I was like, I need some fruit. And I was like way too rude about I was like, just give me the fruit and don't put the like, I think I literally said the stupid, like the stupid, <laughs> stupid crap on it. <laughs> I was trying to be like the ta- yeah. ta- the, the, like the iliote sauce and the like yeah. tahini. Yeah, yeah. I was like, don't put all the fucking Mexican shit on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just had no brain cells left. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. W- p- uh, fix it up nice and they'll put all that horse shit on yeah, it. Yeah. Like, don't. That ma- you, you guys like. Don't make it how you like it. Yeah. <laughs> make it how. Just it, be it a total <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Make it because I'm so tired. I was like, make it look like me. <laughs> and then you walk away. You're like, God, I really f- I fucked that one yeah. up. Buying God. flowers yeah. from them. Like, it's better not be cilantro this time. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. I, I like the fruit with all the spicy shit on it. It tastes retarded. I like the spicy stuff. It's like a retarded taste. It makes no sense. I know it's very bad for me. It the, definitely causes cancer. Tahin? Yeah, it's no. It seems like they took like a piece of like ru- uh, like a, a rebar, and then they put it like uh, with a cheese grinder. Like it's like shook it over the It's like recycled fireworks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's the episode, folks. All right. We're at we're at an hour ten here. Yep. I think I think that's an episode right there. Sounds good. Uh patreon.com slash lemon party. Mm-hmm. Uh clips channel every uh Wednesday at four PM Pacific Standard Time, seven PM Eastern Standard Time. Devin Hate Watch Pod. Hey Watch Pod. Guys. Jace saw drawings by Jace. Uh Gracie's licking my uh Gracie's licking my fucking leg. And uh I hope my plane doesn't go down tomorrow. Because otherwise, this, you're never yeah. gonna. No one's ever gonna see this episode. Yeah, that is true. If yeah. the plane goes down, we'll, we won't even be able to do the Patreon anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'd have no. Clue. I'll go to Devin. I'm like, okay, so whatever. Fuck Ben's memory. Like, we're still <laughs> making money. Like, and then we'd be in this room beating your computer, like <laughs> like Zoolander. Zoolander. Yeah, <laughs> just shaking it and yeah. grunting. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't get astro worlded on my flight. No, yeah. People just rush the cockpit, and I just I turn into one of those uh, like uh, stress dolls. Yeah, your my eyes, eyes pop, pop out. 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 Yeah, and I die. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. Hopefully I don't get trampled to death by a, Are you flying, a family of of uh, that looks like a bunch of geese. Are you flying JetBlue? <laughs> I don't know, man. I God, I I Probably hope to not God not for that. Just El Paso. I feel like I've been having good luck with Southwest lately. We'll roll those dice. I like half the time the plane doesn't take yeah. off. Yeah. I do like the thing I do like about Southwest. Sometimes it annoys me, but they do have like the Mad Men stewardesses. Yeah. Like I, I'm like I feel like I can goose your ass when you walk by. And yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can hate crime people on Southwest. Mm-hmm. They welcome it. Yeah, they, I mean the stewardess go on Southwest and they're like, if you're playing, cra-, they like got a drink and they're like, if this is a plane crash, who gives a shit? <laughs> this is a twenty four seven party, baby. <laughs> the party never stops. Party VSOP, never- <laughs> baby. <laughs> I got an empty first class seat with anybody who's got some snow they can put on these hills. <laughs> Wink. Anyone want to ski? <laughs> Yeah, I like, they also let you bring bags on too with Southwest. They don't give a shit. Yeah, and it is a first come first serve. You can yeah. take well, you can take hockey sticks on if you mm-hmm. want. They don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. You can fucking rollerblade onto that bitch. We're carrying something that beeps. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Anything ben. goes. Oh yeah. You could be juggling C four, like yeah. riding a unicycle onto, yeah. like on like and still scan your phone. And they're like, "Welcome right. aboard to so- Welcome to Southwest. Enjoy your flight." Yeah. You could, you could have a box cutter tucked into your turban <laughs> walking on, and they'd be like, "It's fine." Who cares? Yeah, they also have like the oldest planes too. <laughs> You'll be they in a do. plane with like with like uh, fucking ashtrays on them and shit. Mm. They're like John Wayne used to yell about Native Americans <laughs> right in your seat. Yeah, yeah. Judy and that's he. Judy Garland got the blood cot that killed it. <laughs> like ah. Yeah, Southwest planes are so old. Like, a guy has to like flip the propeller at the front of it <laughs> so you can take off. The pilot is like Charlton Heston. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's the episode, folks. We uh, we'll we'll see you next week, Lord willing. We're alive. Bye. God everybody. bless y'all. Bye.